Greetings to the brethren. So, uh, to continue where I left off in my last video, uh, look, I think we'd all agree that probably uh, our own biggest enemy is ourselves, you know, because at the end of the day, yeah, there may be forces out there that aren't good, but at the end of the day, it's our own choices that really harm us. We are our own biggest enemy. Did you believe that just now? Did that seem like something you kind of would agree with? I mean, it seems pretty uh, reasonable, right? But wait a minute. Is that really true? Are we our own biggest enemy? I mean, if you had like an actual enemy out there that was trying to harm you and stuff, wouldn't you kind of say that that, that would be worse than like, yeah, we all we make mistakes and stuff and sure. But the reason I mention that is because that's kind of how the satanic deception works. It's these little anodyne statements, statements that just seem kind of harmless that you could say that it even seems like a wise thing that's helping you. But wait a minute, if we really examine it, what we find is, you know, actually that seems absurd <laughs> now that you think about it. I mean, imagine, for example, like this is actually a little thought tool I use sometimes is take a lot of our like common beliefs and then imagine that you were to say it to like a group of Jewish people who were trying to like escape from the Nazis and like Germany in like 1942. Imagine you're like, they're like, they're trying to get out of there. There's this nightmares are going on. And then you say like, look guys, you know, I think at the end of the day, you know, yes, Hitler's bad, but at the end of the day, we are all our own biggest enemies. It's like right away, you're like, okay, it wouldn't make sense in that context. And then ask yourself, you know, you might say, well, but they were in an extreme situation. They were in a lot of danger, you know, but how do we know we're not in the same danger? Because in that situation, they didn't realize they were in the danger until right when it happened, right? That's the whole thing. Evil creeps up on you. And Satan, as I said in the last video, is like an evil Don Draper. He just knows how to phrase things really well. But the effects that it has are... Uh, you couldn't come up with a better belief to put people in the perfect position to be destroyed by evil than these conventional ideas that our society just gets us all to go along with. Um, so what I was saying in the last video was like, imagine that you're like a super evil ruler and you want to convince everyone, you know, obey me, obey my commands, abandon whatever you want for yourself and just submit to me. You know, don't even question what I say. You know, you are worthless peons who know nothing, you know, do not resist. Imagine you want to communicate that. Well, if you just say that, I think we could all agree it's not going to work. Even if you try to like say it in different ways, it's probably still not going to work. But look at how if we just do it what I call Satan style, you know, and not what I call the Captain Obvious Satan style, which is just to kind of like say it like, you know, you must obey me or whatever. Right? That doesn't really work. But if we were to say something like imagine my analogy, instead of saying that with a megaphone, the ruler comes out. He's well dressed. He says, hey, everyone, how's it going? Hope everybody's fighting the good fight, doing whatever you're doing, you know, hey. It's kind of random, guys, but I was just thinking today, I was thinking, I had this, I was thinking about deep stuff, and it just occurred to me, you know, look, we all know that at the end of the day, we, we can really be our own biggest enemy. I mean, we, we know that, like, the wise men throughout time, they knew that, you know, what we had to do was overcome our own egos, because at the end of the day, humility is one of the greatest virtues, and the highest achievement that anyone could have would be to transcend your own egoic desires, and reach a state of non-contention where you are at one with the universe, you know, but to do that, you'd have to meditate a lot. I mean, hey, it's not easy, right? I mean, not everyone can see this truth. I mean, I know you guys can because you've been through stuff. You've been there, right? Some people don't get this, but we all know that the ultimate highest human achievement would be to reach enlightenment, a state of transcendence where you overcome your own egoic limitations and blah, 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 blah. And notice how if I said that, you know, what effect does it have if you believe that, right? It doesn't even seem like I'm commanding you to do anything or whatever. It's just like, what if people kind of agree with that, right? And they just go off and live their lives. Well, what effect does that have? Well, if it's true that the highest state that we could attain is to uh, overcome our own egoic desires, which is kind of like saying, don't want anything for yourself, you know, and we all know that what really hurts us in the end, you know, is our own resistance to what is, we, we got to live life on life's terms, blah, blah, blah. You can kind of mix in all these things. What are they all saying? You know, like, don't resist, be passive, right? And, you know, the, the greatest philosopher said, all that I know is that I know nothing. He was the wisest and he could see that in himself, but not everyone can. 
Well, that's kind of like saying you're all just a bunch of ignorant people who know nothing, right? And uh, notice how by presenting it like that, instead of being like, here's a command, follow this, instead of just being like, well, we all know this, that deep down, you know, and we also know that, uh, you know, if you could transcend your egoic desires and reach a state of oneness, you know, you would feel a sublime feeling, blah, blah, blah. You'd, you'd feel the ultimate high. If only you could do that. You know, of course, it's not easy. But that's what we all strive for. You know, like, all you have to do is just dress up the belief a little differently. Just literally adding stuff like being like, believe this. Instead of doing that, just be like, look, we all know that this. And then just say the thing like that. Or say to the people like, hey, you know, look, not everyone can see the deepest truths. Look, I know you guys can because you've been through it, right? It's like, bam, right there, you know. Look, I'm probably preaching to the choir here. Or you say something like, you know, I mean, not everybody can accept this. I mean, some people are pretty foolish, let's admit. Now, look, I know you do. I mean, you're not one of those people, I can tell. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. I'm <laughs> like, all Satan does is little twists like that. And it works really well. It, it really, it, it just preys on human psychology, you know, because at the end of the day, Satan is a supernatural intelligence and he knows the weaknesses in human psychology and man, he knows how to sell ideas. And I've just grasped a little bit of it. I'm seeing parts of it. Um, but what's very interesting about this whole concept uh, is that like, what is the highest wisdom? Getting rid of your ego. We all know that's the ultimate thing that all humans do. And the ancient people agree. And like, wouldn't pretty much everyone agree? I mean, who's going to defend the ego if you say that? Who's going to be like, no, because humility is good, right? And a lot of times what Satan does is he mixes in things that are really true, like real pieces, like humility is good. We all do do things that harm us. You know, the Bible tells us about humility and stuff, but like, but then he gets it to lead to a conclusion that's totally false. Because if we all know that we got to transcend the ego, well, it's kind of weird because the ego is just a concept that somebody came up with in the 19th century. It's like a new idea. Bible, I've never, I don't ever see it mentioned, the ego, you know? And if the ultimate thing we all have to do is, you know, transcend our own ego, you know, if that's really what causes all our problems, well, I mean, aren't there like actual problems out there that are more than just our ego or whatever? But if you think about it, what is our ego exactly? Well, it's like the things we want, right? It's our conception of ourself, right? I mean, what is the ego? You know, but wait a minute. But is that really... I mean, should we just not want anything? Should we have like no conception? Like be like, I am utterly nothing. Is that really a, a good thing to aim at? Why is it that everyone just kind of assumes that it is? I thought that it was, man. I completely believed that we got to transcend our own ego. You know, we got to get rid of our own will, you know. And the interesting thing about that, it, you know, and also uh, we got to not analyze too much. That's another thing about, about our mind. So you don't want to overthink things. You know, over analysis can trap even the greatest minds, you know, like notice how, like, if I just tell you, like, don't question me, don't think about things, you're not going to do it. But if I say like, hey, George, you know, the thing is overthinking things that can confuse even the greatest among us, you know, there's, there's nothing like analysis paralysis or like, say he just comes up with these little catchphrases, these little things. And what is the import of that statement? Like, don't think about anything too much because what is all that stuff really saying? It's saying like, one, you know, give up your own will. <laughs> don't have anything that you want. You know, abandon all your own desires, your own will. We don't examine like, well, what if your will is good? Like, I want my children to be happy. I want to do the most I can with my life. You know, like, it's true. We should absolutely follow God's will. And that's very important. But is God really telling us to not have a will? Or is he telling us to align our will with his will, right? Like, is he really telling us to just want nothing? Or is he saying, want for yourself what I want for you? Because that's the best thing for you. Isn't that what God's saying? If our will is like a little arrow that can like point anywhere, right? Isn't God's not really saying like rip the arrow off. He's saying like, this is my will. I point the arrow like this. And doesn't he really want us to point our arrow like that? So he's really telling us like the direction we should point our arrow in which is very different from having no direction or, or being having no will. If you had no will, then you go to work, you're coming home with your paycheck to your family and you ran to a group of people and they were just like, what are you doing? You are nothing. You are worthless. Give us all of that money. Get down on your knees and apologize for being who you are and then take off all your clothes and then stand up and walk the opposite direction. 
Now, if you really had no will and no ego, meaning no desires of your own and no conception of yourself, wouldn't you just be like, yes, you are right. I am sorry. Here's my money and my clothes. Now I'll walk the other way. Would that be a really wise thing to do? <laughs> would that be like, would you see someone who did that? And you'd be like, wow, they must be the ultimate spiritual master. <laughs> now you'd probably be like, oh my God, what's wrong with that person? So, but isn't it interesting how we're all sure that the ego, a weird concept that someone came up with, you know, in the 19th century, that that's the worst thing we have to overcome, you know, and what is all this stuff about transcending the ego? You know, it's just like this phrase, like Satan's just saying to us, like, you know, don't dare want anything for yourself. Become totally passive and let me act upon you. Like if he says that, obviously very few people are just going to do that. But if he says, you know, I mean, we all know you should do whatever you want with your life, you know, and I certainly wouldn't tell you what to do. But one thing we could all agree on is that the deepest achievement is the transcendence of our egos. <laughs> if I just say it like that, it's like, oh, the transcendence of the ego. What does that mean exactly? Yeah, it means give up all your own, your own preferences and just follow me and obey. And so if you really believe all this stuff, if you believe there can be no light without darkness and that we should transcend our own egos and that our own greatest enemy is ourself, you know, and you believe these things. Well, oh, yeah. And that good and evil, you guys got to look at it deeply, man, because they're really... They're really one and there can't be light without darkness. If you believe all this stuff, then like, what is it really like? What, what are you really, how's that really going to affect you? Well, you, if you ran into evil, you wouldn't resist it. Non-contention. That's the high, that's the sages practice. It means like the Nazis are like deporting everyone. Just go along with it. Just report, report the Jews or whatever it is they tell you to do. Just do it. Right. Uh, just let whatever force is acting on you have its way with you. Uh, and you should even just get rid of your own preferences. Just be like, don't even have something you want for yourself. Stop even perceiving anything as, as evil. Cause the only problem is your own perception. Also think as little as possible. Don't analyze things. Don't question things, you know, cause that's your problem. You're thinking too much, <laughs> you know, so don't think that or question anything, you know, to come to your own, uh, conclusions. Um, and Oh, speaking of which, dude, I'm telling you, man, Satan has embedded this stuff in everything. Like, here's a funny example. Have you ever thought about the word meditation? What does it mean? Well, we all know it means to, you know, sit there and just clear your mind and just not think. <laughs> just keep your mind blank. We know it's really good for you. We know it's really wise. We know the wisest people do it. And we know it can empower you and enlighten you. But wait a minute. But isn't the word meditate? It's like use the mind, like... Why does it mean to not use your mind? Like when the scripture says, you know, what is it? Is it Saul who says, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight? Speaking to God. Wait a minute. Does he mean like the meditation of my heart is like, let, let it be acceptable that I spend four hours a day just thinking nothing? No, I mean, he means the things I think about in my heart, the things I consider pondering things, letting my mind roam, basically the exact thing that meditation is like shutting off, right? Or what we call meditation. But isn't it funny that like, that shows that an earlier phase of human uh, existence, meditation meant to use your mind, meditation, right? To think about things, to consider things. But somehow in our time period, it's come to mean the exact opposite. It'd be like if exercise meant like, don't move. Are you doing enough exercise? what is exercise? Well, it's not moving any muscle and sitting there being totally limp. But, but look how you can dress it up a little. It's like, well, the thing is, when you burn the muscles out, you know, you can't use them, you know, and rest periods are actually what give you strength. That's actually when you're gaining strength is when you're resting. That's when the muscle rebuilds. And so if you want to increase your strength, you need to make sure to rest enough. You know, if you want more strength, you know, you should exercise every day which means to not move at all. You may not be exercising enough, you know, because the people who have the strongest bodies do the most exercise and exercise is not moving at all. Like, like see how you can kind of dress it up by using a lot of truths. But isn't that funny that to meditate is like to just not think. And isn't it funny how like no one can really do it? <laughs> like whenever you try to meditate, it's like, I just keep thinking about things. Could it be that God gave us the capacity to think and analyze and understand because it's actually really important and we need to use it to perceive the truth? But no, because the people who perceive the truth the most, the wisest people, they meditated all day, which means that they didn't use their mind at all. And it wasn't easy, but they mastered it. They spent 26 years just 
thinking one, they, they thought of mantra. Mantras are useful. You know, if you just think like, you know, uh, a mantra over and over again, like I am one with the universe. I am one with the universe. Just repeat that so that you don't actually start thinking about anything. And it's not easy, but if you do it enough, you will know the most by not actually thinking about anything to understand everything the deepest. If you just to stop trying to understand anything and just train yourself to just sit there with a blank mind and the people who have done that the most, they are the ones who really comprehend things like, <laughs> doesn't it seem a little ridiculous, but I believed it, man. I'm a pretty smart guy. And I thought it seemed reasonable when I was believed it before I was saved. I thought like, yeah, because they're they They can see the truth because their mind is blank. And that's because really the things that stop us from seeing the truth are our own mental agitation. See, you can just keep phrasing it differently. Like, <laughs> you know, just kind of change the phrasing a little. And, you know, I'm saying it here in this context, but imagine someone saying it in a serious context. You might have to admit it, it sounds kind of reasonable in a way, you know, but I hope you can see here with me how ridiculous it is that weirdly the definition of certain words has migrated to be the opposite of what would possibly make sense for that word to mean and what the word used to mean. As we see in the, the scripture, the meditations of the heart used to be actually using your mind and thinking about things. But anyway, now the highest wisdom is to abandon your ego, to give up anything you want for yourself, uh, to, 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 to overcome resistance in your ego, which means to become totally passive, uh, to meditate all the time, which means to not think about or analyze anything. Uh, and, you know, and by the way, the people that really do this, they are the wisest, most admirable souls. Oh, also, they're in a constant state of euphoria that's better than any drug. Just let you know that. By the way, if you could do this, dude, you would experience a super high that's better than heroin. Let's just sprinkle that. In. <laughs> Satan's really smart. He just throws that in there, kind of like, you know, so as you're swallowing all the stuff about how like meditation means not using your mind and you should just become totally passive and just go along with anything and just, oh, by the way, evil, don't even think about it, doesn't really exist. Oh, and by the way, if you did this, you'd have a super high better than heroin. <laughs> you know, and you're just kind of like, oh, you kind of, kind of notice that part. Everybody kind of wants the bliss of the self or whatever. Wow, it's better than any drug. You kind of, you kind of go along with it, you know. Um, and of course, if you do meditate and go into certain things. Sometimes you do feel this weird bliss. How much you want to bet that's some demon that comes along and hits you? I experienced it myself, it's like a bliss burst. Satan just throws in that little part there. But we all know that, you know, the people who are totally passive, who refuse to even recognize evil, who abandon anything that they would rationally want for themselves and accept anything. By the way, a lot of them are also ascetics. So they sleep on rocks and just endure anything because that shows how wise they are. So if you want to just mistreat and destroy a bunch of people, that's a great thing to get them to believe. It's actually a sign of wisdom. You know, they don't resist, you know, and then they meditate all the time. They don't, you know, they're not overcome by the mental swarm of confusing thoughts. Like there's actually a lot of like Hindu scriptures that say like, if you don't meditate enough, you will be consumed by the whirling maze of confusion that will never let you rest. And as you read it, you're like, oh my God, that is kind of what it's like to think all the time. And it's just like Satan being like, boogity boo, <laughs> you'll have to think about stuff more and more. Whoa, the, the fireball of twisting thought current will suck you in. And you're like, oh my God, I think I can feel it happening. I, I thought that dude, speaking from experience. But anyway, the final thing I should tell you about the super wise men who've overcome their egoic desires and just go along with anything, refuse to see evil, don't use their minds to think about anything because they meditate all day, and they're in a constant state of super bliss from just meditating. By the way, they're also the most free. <laughs> because what we're describing here is a totally passive victim that would be the perfect person if you want to just dominate society like those people oh they're just perfect they'll go along with anything they won't admit anything's evil they're just these passive human vegetables that would be the perfect thing you want to control but by the way they're actually the most free <laughs> now i'm laughing at it now because it's ridiculous but i believed it and if i had made a serious video today instead of making this video and talking to believers. And by the way, if you're not a believer, uh, do believe in the Lord Jesus Christ while you still have time because the stakes of this game are serious. But if I had made a video that was just like talking to YouTube in general, and I said all this stuff about, we got to overcome uh, the ego, you know, and the people who have done this, like they experience the bliss of the self. And ultimately, we have to ask ourselves, 
Are they the only ones who are truly free? And if I had made that video, a lot of people would believe in it. A lot of people think this is great. This is wise. This is helpful. And yet look how what it's all doing is just like the ruler with that megaphone shouting out, obey me, want nothing for yourself. Satan just, it's like I picture it in my mind, literally like a bunch of evil henchmen sitting around like a, a, a board meeting. And they're like, we want to get people into a state of total passivity and helplessness where we'll, they'll just go along with our evil whims, even as it destroys them, you know. But the problem is, uh, Sir Satan, or whatever they call him, like Lord of Darkness, like people just have an inherent resistance to being controlled. No one wants to be controlled. There's just a human urge, you know, for freedom. And so we don't know how to do it. And then Satan's just like, tell them that by doing this, that's the only way they could ever really be free. And it's just like, it sounds ridiculous, but man, it works really well which we can tell by the fact that our whole society believes in it. I mean, come on, come on. Like we, people believe this. This isn't some obscure thing. Like you just, what are these statements down enough? Everybody agrees there can be no light without darkness, right? I mean, we, we'd all agree that, you know, you got to transcend the ego. We'd all agree that the people that did the most good for the earth were those enlightened masters who sat in a cave, a bunch of, you know, it's like, uh the world is uniting under these beliefs because this is stuff that Hindus agree on, Buddhists agree on, you know, it just is presented in such a, now the new age movement. Oh, there's a whole other movement. I didn't touch on. They agree on this stuff. It's all, it, all the particular actual beliefs these group have, the thing that put them at odds, Satan doesn't even worry about those because it's the underlying things that he's going to unite them with. Oh, they'll find a way to hash out their, their actual explicit belief differences because they're going to all unite under this fabric of there can be no light without darkness. And hey, we all agree the ego is the enemy. And like, that's where he's putting the poison in. It's these background beliefs. It's these things that are like subtle, but like a Buddhist would agree, you know, that's what Satan's going to do. There's going to be the Buddhist and the new age person and the, the Hindu and the whatever uh, Islamic person or something. And like Satan's just going to say, hey, everybody settle down. Look, we all agree that the real enemy is the ego. Right. And like, that's how he's going to unite it. We'd all agree there could be no light without darkness. Like it's that underlying fabric, that thing that we all sort of believe in the different cultures that's going to tie together. And that's where the real poison is, because those statements, those things are negations of the word itself. Uh, I didn't go into a lot of examples of it. I have a lot more, uh, but I'll, I'll save that for future videos because I don't want to put out, you know, six hours per day. Well, maybe I should, man, because God's shown me a lot of stuff. And a couple of times he's kind of told me like, Evan, get moving. Like you're supposed to do something with these things. So I hope that our father has been happy with me presenting it. And I hope that it's useful somehow. And it makes you start reconsidering some of these basic beliefs of our society. Now, if you've been saved for a while, you probably already realized uh, the poison in a lot of this stuff. So it may not come uh, as a surprise to you. But me, I've, I've been saved less than a year now although my anniversary is coming up. Uh, and so for me to see some of this stuff for the first time, to be like, wait a minute, is it really true that we have to overcome the ego? And that's, wait a minute, that's what I believed for years. And now I'm seeing not only is it not true, it's a satanic belief to generate a bunch of really passive people who are just ripe for their souls being plucked into hell. And it's happening all around us. So brothers and sisters, the darkness is out there. The darkness is great, but we shall know the truth and it will make us free. Uh, it's all about knowing the truth, man, because as long as Satan can keep us blinded and under deception, we can have the best intentions in the world and we won't be able to escape unless we can see where the chains are that are binding us. And I put forth that it is in our beliefs and beliefs that we don't even question. And man, I have a lot of examples of them and I'll put those in future videos. But I hope that by expressing this and a bit more about Satan's style, you start to see just how his deception works, how effective it is, how you don't even notice it uh, because he preys on us psychologically because he understands us inside and out. And a lot of it, it's both super evil and ingenious, but also like really stupid at the same time. Like what if you wanted to make a TV show where the main character was just abominably evil and just did all these horrific things that people like don't approve of at all, but you want people to like, like him. Or whatever. It's like, how do you do it? And it's just like, you know, Satan's just like, well, make him be really sexy and attractive to women. <laughs> there you go. Because then the women are going to fantasize about it and men will want to be like that guy. And then since you're focused on that, you kind of don't notice that actually it's all evil. Uh, that's 
It's a lot of the way Satan operates, but man, there's also super complex deep ways that I've discovered too that are mind blowing that are going to take like a while to explain, but I'll try to pace myself and I won't get into it too much. But hey, God is the truth and the truth is a person. The truth isn't an idea. It's not a vague blob. The truth is the Lord Jesus Christ who came to earth in the flesh, died for us, and he has told us in his word that we shall know the truth and the truth will make us free. So I hope that my videos, although silly at times, shine a little bit of a light on some parts of the truth. Uh, and please join me in helping to shine more light on the truth by, you know, let me know if you have any thoughts or if you see any things I don't. I mean, that's super helpful. I can gather more and and ho hopefully understand this all better because ultimately as believers and as people that are saved, it's our obligation to try to get other people to see the truth. And I think pointing out the reality of Satan is a good way because everybody kind of knows that evil is like really powerful and is taking over the world. It's kind of in our faces. And I think that ultimately the only way to understand just how evil and powerful it is, is to understand that there is a supernatural force behind it. And it is uniting the power structures of the world. It basically already has, and it's dominating our world. And to understand that, you have to understand that evil exists and true evil is very powerful. And this right here explains that and says why it's happening and says that we're on this predetermined course and you can see it all unfolding before our eyes. So I continue to struggle to try to figure out how to express it to people and show people so they can come to the same thing I have, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so everyone, brothers and sisters, let's fight. I know it's not easy right now. I know it's hard, uh, but I have a lot of things to say about the subjects of depression and addiction uh, that I think will help because they're not the way we usually look at them. And a lot of those cycles and forces are being held in place by false beliefs that we don't even realize we have. But to see those beliefs, you have to be willing to overturn the most basic things our society says about them. Because I'm telling you right now, man, if our whole society says something, if everybody agrees on it, it's almost certainly a lie from Satan, even if it doesn't appear to be that way. Because our society is run by the prince of the earth now more than ever before. And so if you really want to get to the truth of things, you have to be willing to think not only could our society be wrong, flip it around 180 degrees. And it seems ridiculous at first, but then look at it more and more and especially look and see if maybe it connects to something in here. Because like I said, a lot of these satanic beliefs are actually complete inversions of stuff that this right here says. So anyway, I won't go on and on for too many hours, but it's great to be back with you guys making videos. Let's fight the good fight. Look, I know it's dark right now. I know that, you know, we're miserable in a lot of ways because evil's taken over the earth to a degree it never has. And it's just ruining society. And Satan's doing that consciously. It's intentional. It's not just like, whoops, suddenly men and women aren't even dating anymore. And the new generation's not getting married and everyone has worse mental disorders than ever. It's like, it's not an accident. That's sabotage. That's Satan twisting key parts of our society to destroy everything. And yeah, it's miserable right now. But you know what? For those of us who believe, we will be reigning with the Lord Jesus Christ for a thousand years. God will give us our reward for fighting through this. That is written. That is certain. We will be there. You will be there with me. And we will be rejoicing in those times. So let's just fight. Let's get through this last little bit of it. And not out of some burdensome sense of obligation and, oh, we just have to do what's right, but it's so tiring. Look, that mindset, it, it, like, blocks you from doing it. That's why God says he loves the joyous giver. Satan loves to play up and be like, yeah, that's the right thing to do, but it's just, it's hard, you know, and that's why you got to force yourself to do it and blah, blah, blah. That's one of the key ways that he blocks us from doing it is this whole hustle culture. You got to grind. You got to do it. Anyway, that's a whole separate sermon I have prepared. But what I hope to show you is how so many of the things in our society that purport to help you, that seem to be the cure, not only are they not the cure, those things themselves are the poison because they contain false beliefs in them that actually stop you from doing the thing. Like the example in the other video about the whole idea, you know, if you want others to love you, first you got to love yourself. If you really believe that, it's going to stop you from ever being loved by others because you won't love them. You'll focus on yourself and sink into your own world. And, you know, anyway, I could go on and on and on, uh, but I'll save that for tomorrow. So uh, the next uh, sermon, I have three quotes from the scripture and well, I'll, I'll save it for the next sermon. So 
I love you guys. Let's fight the good fight. We'll be with the Lord Jesus Christ in the end. This is only temporary. Society won't be dominated by evil forever. And at the end of the day, if you're watching this and you're saved, which just means you believe the gospel with your heart, if you do, you will see me on the other side. I will see you. And God will reward us with things we couldn't even comprehend right now because these sufferings right now are not even comparable to the glory that shall be revealed in us. I know that that's true. And uh, hey, I'll see you in the millennial kingdom, if not before. Okay, I love you guys. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that made all this possible that we could break free from this and we will meet him one day. And oh man, that will be the greatest moment. Yeah, so what? We had to live for... A few decades in the misery world of Satan's dystopia. Yeah, whatever. It's going to pass away. But his words will not pass away and we will be with him. And that is going to be awesome. And I can't wait for that moment. So, okay. I love you guys. Uh, thank you, God, for giving me the Holy Spirit and helping me express things. I know I babble on, but I'm going to keep babbling on. Okay, everyone. I love you guys. This is One Believer signing off.